I need my Mary for this one, but right before, like you guys came over, I, I had to super glue her hands back on because they fell off. Back when my husband Kevin and I first started dating, he went on pilgrimage to Rome without me, but he did bring me back a lovely gift. He brought me back this beautiful statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, to be honest, at the time, I probably would have appreciated some gelato more because the truth is that um, I just didn't really understand the Mary thing. I actually had a really hard time with understanding how does Mary fit into my life? See, here's the thing, Mary's perfect and I'm not. And so I would look at her and think, okay, so she's supposed to be my heavenly mother, yet I have no idea how to relate to her. So if you're anything like me, I wanna share with you three reasons not to give up on Mary. Cause you see like a good mother, Mary didn't give up on me. So reason number one, not to give up on Mary. Mary was perfect, but she was still very, very human. You see, like us, Mary had free will. She did not have to become the mother of God. God gave her a full choice. She made that choice to heroically become the mother of God. Secondly, the reason why it is that Mary is still very human is because she still experienced emotions. You know, when the angel Gabriel came to her and said, you're going to become the mother of God, she was greatly troubled. Luke tells us that. He tells us that specifically. She felt she was greatly troubled. Or when Jesus was lost in the temple and Joseph and Mary were searching frantically to find him, Luke tells us again about Mary's emotions. He says that she was anxiously looking for him. You see, Mary had emotions. She experienced things just like us. Emotions happened to her. The difference perhaps is that she always knew how to handle them. She always knew how to direct them properly with complete trust that God was going to take care of things. And the third reason why Mary was perfect but still very human is that she still experienced human limitations. Mary got hungry. Mary got tired. I bet Mary had a pretty exhausting life following after Jesus. Her life was not always super comfortable. So we know that we can come to her when we are tired, when we are hungry, when we are feeling emotions, whatever it is, she fully understands all of that. And she can help us to be like her and knowing how to lead and guide those emotions, those human limitations, not to sin, but to lead them in a way that's going to help us to grow in virtue. Second reason why we should not give up on Mary is because Mary's life was not easy. That might seem like a weird thing to say, but Mary's life, think about it. Her life was not a cakewalk. If you struggle in life, if there are hard things that you're facing, Mary faced really hard things. To begin with, an angel comes to her when she's betrothed to somebody and says, okay, you're gonna become pregnant with God's son. Imagine her trying to tell that story to people. Like, I don't think that would be too believable, right? Like, yeah, it's not Joseph's baby, but it's okay. God gave me the baby. No, who's gonna believe that? I'm sure she faced so much judgment and so much persecution for the life that she said yes to. Not only that, but then she goes on and she gives birth in a stable. I've given birth, that doesn't sound fun. And then she goes on, after the baby's born, people are wanting to kill Jesus. So what does she have to do? She and Joseph and Jesus have to flee to Egypt. So Mary, during her first years of mothering, she's away from her community, she's away from her support group, she's away from everything that's familiar as a refugee in some other land, raising her child essentially by herself with just Joseph. That took a lot of strength, I guarantee. And then you go on further in her life. She's following Jesus. She's being with him at all times. And that includes those three years of his crazy ministry where he is roaming all about the country and he is encountering different people. He's performing miracles. Mary was often there by his side, which means that she was living this kind of nomads lifestyle as well. I imagine it was not very comfortable. And then at the end of her life, what happens? Jesus is taken to his death. And as his mother, she is by his side. I cannot imagine the amount of strength that it would take to watch your child suffer like Mary watched Jesus suffer. Yet she stayed, she remained, she was with him, and she never abandoned him in his greatest time of need. Mary understands suffering. 
She understands discomfort. She understands difficulties in life. You can always come to her and bring those things to her and she will get it. Third reason not to give up on Mary is that Mary is our good, good mother. You know, I think oftentimes in the church, we do a good job of talking about how God, our Father, is our good, good Father. And we have to be reminded of that because sometimes the men in our lives or the father figures or the fathers in our lives, they fail us. And we look to them to be the example of what God's fatherhood is supposed to look like, and it doesn't add up. But I think the same thing can be said of Mary. Sometimes we project onto her attributes from the failings that we've seen of women in our lives, whether that be our mothers or our mother figures. No matter how wonderful a mom is, all of our moms have to some degree failed us because they are not sinless like Mary. They are not perfect. And so we have to be very careful not to project onto Mary the failings of women in our lives, but to recognize, no, she is a perfect mother. And as a perfect mother, what does she do? She advances the growth of her children. She advances the growth. And yes, she's not here to physically help us grow, but she from heaven is helping us spiritually to grow. She's praying for us. She's interceding for us. She's bringing our needs to her son, Jesus, just like she did at the wedding feast of Cana. It's at Cana. Do you remember this story? It comes to us from John. John chapter two, Mary and, and Jesus and some of the disciples, they go to this wedding. And at this wedding, they start to notice that they're running out of wine. And Mary, recognizing how embarrassing this would be for the couple, brings this need to her son. And she says, Jesus, they have no wine. She brings the problem to him. She intercedes for the couple. And what does Jesus do? Like a good son, he does what she asks. He gets the jars, fills them with water, changes them into wine. Why? Because Mary asked. You see, just like I might ask you to pray for me, you can ask Mary to pray for you, to bring your needs and intentions to her son. Nobody knows Jesus quite as well as his own mom. So bring those needs to Mary and she will bring them to Jesus for you. She will help you, she will guide you, she will mother you if we can place that trust in her that she truly is a good, good mother. So here's my challenge for you. If you want to get to know Mary more, one great way to get to know her is through her son. And that's exactly what the rosary does for us. So I wanna challenge you to pray a decade of the joyful mysteries, those first five mysteries, just one decade, choose your favorite scene from those early years of Jesus's life and ask Mary to hold your hand and to show you who her son is, to reveal to you who her son is through this mystery, through this time of prayer. So if you wanna know more about Mary and how she is our good, good mother, check out my new book, Reveal the Gift, Living the Feminine Genius. Know of my prayers and be saints. It's worth it.